brings on the left uh, is this uh, very elegant uh, dissection of an octopus brain. And this large central mass right here uh, is illustrated on the right. There are 34, 36 lobes of the brain and millions and millions of cells. Uh, so this is a complex and sophisticated brain by any measure, vertebrate or invertebrate. Uh, here's a diagram that shows the peculiarity of the nervous system of the cephalopods. This blue spot in the middle is where the central brain is, right between the eyes, and you just saw a drawing of that. There are about 80 million neurons, uh, depending on how you count those. But what's incredible is in the rest of the body, uh, the peripheral nervous system, there are 300 million neurons. So this is a nervous animal, so to speak. It's got neurons everywhere. And most of them are given over to controlling the eight arms and these millions of color chromatophores in the skin and so forth. Interestingly, that even though you have a central brain, at the base of each arm, there's a little, we could call it a small satellite brain. So some people could count and say, well, they have eight small satellite brains and one central brain. And the big question that we and others are looking at now is, which controls which, and we don't know the answer to that yet. The point is the brain is very sophisticated. Well, that brings us to a quick evolutionary context picture uh, that I want to show you is that we've got uh, mammals on the right, that's uh, our side of the evolutionary tree, and on the other side, you've got the cephalopods back here. The common denominator for those two groups was a long time ago down at the bottom here. And the curiosity question is, it seems as though that the cephalopods have produced complex behaviors in a different route than we mammals have. And the big question is whether or not the cortical structure of the cephalopod brain is fundamentally different. Now, if it is, uh, that tells us that there's one more route to evolving intelligence on the planet. Uh, we don't know if that's the case yet, but it's a big question that evolutionary biologists and neurobiologists and animal behavior folks like me are looking at. And I think if it turns out to be the case, then the artificial intelligence community would have one more model other than the human model for complexity uh, and intelligence. But I'm dreaming a little there, but a lot of us are looking for those blue sky questions. Now, two discoveries recently about the cephalopods that are at play here. One is that their genomes have been done just recently and their genomes are absolutely enormous. That is a big unexpected feature and the genome is loaded with things for the nervous system. That's not unexpected. But what's really curious about cephalopods versus any other animal group is that instead of just taking their DNA and making a transcript of RNA and making a protein, which is how all life works, the cephalopods take that RNA and they edit, they edit the DNA at an incredible rate, uh, 500 times more than humans do. It's really an amazing difference. We don't know what it's all about, but it sets them apart in terms of how they deal with genes. And, and most of those are for the nervous system, it's thought. So again, uh, might explain a little bit about why they aren't a snail any longer. They're very different. 